tried out one thing, tried another thing, tried another thing, tried another thing, tried another thing. Be aware of the longevity of each type of motivation. You gotta become the master at coaxing the stubborn horse. You need a sense of urgency. You need your mind to focus. You need to be engaged. I don't wanna jump. Don't jump. It's not worth it. It's not worth it. Hello, Believe Nation. My name is Evan Carmichael. My one word is believe, and I believe that entrepreneurs will solve all of the world's major problems. So to help you on your journey today, we're going to learn from entrepreneur, speaker, and author Owen Cook, and my take on his top 10 rules for success, volume two. Rule number eight is my personal favorite, and I'd love to know which one you guys like the best. And as always, as you're watching, if you hear something that really resonates with you, please leave it in the comments below. Put quotes around it so other people can be inspired. You might win a prize as well. And also when you write it down, it's much more likely to stick for yourself as well. Enjoy. So why is it so important to find your purpose? You've probably heard this many times. You have to find your purpose. And when you do, your life will be amazing. Your life will be more palatable. Your life will be a richer experience. Well, it's probably occurred to you that finding your purpose is ultimately lying to yourself because at some point you're gonna die. The people who you've affected possibly are gonna die. And even at some point, the world is going to die. So why do we say it's so important to find your purpose? In my opinion, finding your purpose is where you find your humanity. Because most people think that just by walking around here like this, that they are a human being. And technically, biologically that is true they are human beings but philosophically by another way of looking at it many of these people are just a biological mass reacting to their environment their values are imposed upon them their opinions are imposed upon them and they walk through life reacting they're soaking in information like a sponge and there is a lack of a core what finding your purpose does it creates gravity the gravity of personal boundaries when you have a purpose you have to create boundaries about what you will and will not allow into your life that's both from other people but also your own behavior. Start now. Start immediately. Start yesterday. Start as soon as you can. You have these grand plans in your mind, this grand vision of how things would look when you finally started. Maybe you're thinking of approaching that first girl or doing that first night of approaching. And you think, if I finally did that, what would happen? Could I do the perfect first approach and get married? Could I avoid rejection? Could I have my first night out be my last? It's not going to happen. Anything that's worth doing will take time. It's going to take a lot of work. It's going to take a lot of repetition. This grand vision that you have in your mind of perfection is interfering with your life. Forget perfection. Start immediately. I remember when I created the Blueprint Program, and for years I thought, if I just put out this one Blueprint Program, my entire life would change. The Blueprint came out, it made a couple of million dollars, and guess what? I took that money, sunk it back into my company, and I was back in the same place. The same thing goes for all the best ideas that I've ever released on video. I thought, oh, I'll just put it out. And one once it's out, it will go viral and disseminate across the planet and change the world. Did the world change when I put out that video? No. If I want to change the world, what will I have to do? I will have to grind. I will have to hustle. I'll have to keep going and persevering for years and maybe decades. Whatever it is that you want to do, start immediately. Get over that perfect idea in your mind. Start bad. Do a bad job. Do a sh job. Make it suck. At least you're getting some momentum with it. Once you get out there and you see how much you suck, you can begin to make changes. You can begin to make adjustments and at least you're taking action. Do not wait to start. Waiting to start. The time to start is now. First of all, I believe that most people, uh, there's really only a few key areas where we have almost like a superpower, okay? Um, aptitudes, all right? I guess we could call it a super aptitude. And uh, we're looking for those super aptitudes all the time by trying out different lanes. All right, so take myself. Uh, I'm somebody who has attention deficit disorder, and what that means is that I can speak almost indefinitely. It means that I also have uh, almost infinite creativity, and uh, that also comes from growing up with depression. When you're uh, depressed, that can oftentimes trigger uh, this very, very intense creativity. So between having depression, attention deficit disorder, uh, and also in my case, if you look at things like um, growing up unable to read social cues, you have an interesting recipe for how I built real social dynamics, okay? So I basically found my super aptitudes because by not understanding something so thoroughly, uh, I had to break it down so deeply to understand it, that's social dynamics, which creates great content, plus I'm being depressed, uh, creates creativity, and also having ADD allows me to talk forever because I don't feel the passage of time uh, in the way that a normal person does. I, I can't feel time passing, so I could do this forever. Okay, so if you look at that, that created a super aptitude. Okay, now how did I find it? 
I tried out many different things. Um, as long as I was trying out different things, I was happy. So tried out one thing, tried another thing, tried another thing, tried another thing, tried another thing. The enemy of the best is the good. So once you have a pretty good life, you're established as a man, what's to motivate you to keep going to that elite level? Uh, the one that I think is the most powerful in the long term, of course, is higher self motivation. And that's when you've taken the focus off of yourself and you're seeing what it does for other people. Uh, basically, you've reached a very high paradigm where your sense of identity is not just tied up in you, but in everything that you see around you. Okay, you are this, you're this, you're part of your environment, your environment is uh, a part of you. Even people who you dislike are just a simple part of the elements and the lay of the land in that environment. So when you can actually take on uh, I guess you could call it a larger circle of concerns, as uh, Stephen Covey would, would call it. You have a very, very long-term and very powerful motivation. That's the kind of thing that mo motivates you to get out in the rain, uh, you know, and record a video. <laughs> you know, because you're not doing it so much for yourself. You know, I could be recording a video like this in the room, but just because I want people to enjoy watching it. I see an opportunity, boom, I want to do it. So that's the most powerful motivation in the long term, okay? That's what's going to make you just go and go and go. Uh, but where's the problem there? Well, higher self-motivation is good, except what starts to happen is you start to ignore things like, I don't know, marketing, right? So, you know, you're all up in the skies, man, thinking about higher purpose, man, and all this kind of shit, raw one, man. And then all of a sudden, uh, you know, you can't pay your rent because you didn't do things the way that you should do it. You know, you didn't handle something simple like marketing. Oh, marketing, oh, it's all so barbaric, right? Things like that, and uh, then you get screwed. So every single motivation is good, okay? They're all there to help you. Um, personally for me, why I love the higher self motivation is because, I don't know, I just, petty sh just, it doesn't do a lot for me at this point and day-to-day uh, -day practical concerns, I've already handled that, right? So for me, it's about the higher self. But at the same time, I like to tap into all elements of it. Um, I'm not above a little petty fun once in a while and I'm definitely not above handling my day-to-day -day concerns as a man, uh, especially as a father. So again, all motivations are good. Be aware of the longevity of each type of motivation and then tap into it. You think to yourself, why am I so damn needy? I wish I could get rid of this neediness. Uh, I wish I could try harder to become less needy. Um, but actually, what I'm gonna suggest to you is that rather than trying harder to eliminate neediness, Another focus that you could take is creating what I call an ecosystem of positive emotions. So uh, it's just like I was saying about this Hamilton pool right here. You have to learn to nurture yourself. You have to learn to fill your own cup. Um, okay, so this is very similar to something like say, time management. Let's say that you're late all the time and you think, I have to try harder to be on time. I've just, no, I've gotta try harder. And uh, you try harder, you try harder, you try harder. And maybe even people will say to you, hey man, you know, if you're late all the time, it shows that you disrespect other people's time. You're a disrespectful person. And you hear that and you think, wow, you know, I know that. I, I don't wanna be disrespectful to other people's time. But what you're not realizing is that by trying harder, you're not gonna fix the problem. Um, if you're somebody who's naturally late, the thing that you have to do is find other people to help you to be on time, or you have to set alarms, or set multiple alarms, or put little trip wires around your house, or find literal processes that you can bring into the equation that will stop you from being late. Uh, well, it's the same thing that goes for stopping being needy. So, you know, you might tell yourself, I have to try harder not to be needy. And you can do that, and much like, you know, stopping being late, uh, you can have a bit of success with that. But what I would suggest to you is that you need to actually build you know, a different way of looking at it to stop being needy. You have one foot in one reality and one foot in another reality. You try to keep one foot in presence, realizing the world's perfect as it is, and the other side is the desire to fight and to fight the bullshit that you see happening in the world, the, you, you know, to fight the f mediocrity and complacency and just sucking, you know? And I, I know for me, like, you know, one of my biggest questions is, when I think of the pain that I went through for my first couple decades, that was so painful that that left an imprint on me permanently that for me to not spend my life, like given the opportunities that I've had and even things that look like negative luck, in reality gave me certain motivations that in the end wound up as opportunities. So you, you know, you could argue that I had a very hard life, but um, those things that were hard resulted in where I'm at today. So for me not to spend my whole life fighting for you know, the, the outcome of helping people to have a path forward to get out of the reality that I was in, I would have to acknowledge 
that my life has no value. Like, if that makes sense. Like, for me to say, you know what? I got out of that bullshit, that, that mental cloud of hell that I was in growing up. I found pathways out of it, and I'm not going to spend my life showing other people those pathways that I personally learned. I'd have to say, that would basically be me having to say, you know what? There's really no point to f- in life anyway. There's no point to humanity. So I might as well just have fun, you know? And, and that may be the truth, <laughs> you know? Like it just, it's just a big narcissistic self-involved exercise. Um, but, you know, I've made the choice to value human life and I've made the choice to fight as hard as I can for that. And so ultimately for me, I think like the, the decision that I've made is like happiness to me, like when I'm happiest is when I'm pushing towards that. And taking time off is nice if it's to recharge to go back to the war. You know, and, and war doesn't mean necessarily fighting against something, but fighting for something, like just fighting for that positive outcome. So don't think of it as war, like whenever, because in, in a certain way of thinking, when you're, whenever you're fighting against something, like they say, whatever you resist persists. So it's not like that kind of resistance, right? You don't want to bring resistance into it. That's what I was talking about earlier. You don't want to bring resistance against something into your war, but you want to just think of a happier, more, more kind of present energy-based outcome and push towards that. You just push towards that. And use all of your faculties, every faculty that you have, honing it internally and externally, honing it, honing it, honing it to get it to that level and just continually sharpening the sword, the inner sword, but also your outer abilities, just sharpening it. And that, that's, that's life for me. What I want you to do is I want you to think of your brain, not like you're actually in control of your brain, but actually rather think of your brain like a stubborn horse or a stub- stubborn elephant. And I want you to take on what I call the chariot riding frame. And uh, what that means is that a guy who's good at pickup is like the charioteer. He's good at smacking on the horse. And uh, what happens as a result of that is that you have to learn at coaxing the horse to go to where you want it to go. Uh, so let's say that I'm gonna come out on the coldest day of the year to record a video blog. I say to myself, you know what, I'll just show up and we'll see if I like it, if I can do it, and I can always go home if I, you know, if I wanna go home. And once I'm out here, it's like, ah, oh, f it, who gives a sh-? I should start to have fun with it. It's kind of frightening. I feel like I'm literally about to die, but uh, we'll wrap this quickly. Um, likewise, say I'm gonna go to the gym and I'm not feeling well. Maybe I'll just say, you know what, dude? I'll just warm up. And uh, if I could just warm up, then good enough. Um, once I get there, I'll probably take action, right? So that's fine. Um, how about if it's like with homework, right? Okay, I'll just read a page or I'll just go do one math problem. Next thing you know, you're cracking into it. Well, whenever you get into a venue, I want you to think of it the same way. Like, look, I'm just gonna go do a quick approach. I'm just gonna go say hi. Even on the way to the venue, just start saying hi, okay? Literally, uh, that's the gist we should do. You know, I'm gonna send my cameraman inside. You, just go inside. Just go, I'm very safe. Take the backpack and you just go inside and I will survive here. And this, and this, bang. You gotta become the master at coaxing the stubborn horse, okay? Literally, you're just the master at coaxing the stubborn horse. And uh, when you have that down, you'll crush. But when you can't control the horse, the horse gets antsy, the horse starts making excuses, and everything goes to sh- um, Some of the things that I do, for example, is right when I get in there, I'm like, hey! And then my reticular activation system will see everyone looking at me, and I'm like, and I'll start scanning, I'm like, are people getting mad, are people getting mad? And when I see that nobody's getting mad, I realize, you know what? I'm not under any kind of threat here. And then I go and I crush it. So basically, you wanna think of it like, You're always showing your brain what I call proof, not promises, that nothing bad will happen, okay? You just keep fueling your brain with that. So let's say that you just go start talking to people, right? Like, let's just say I talked to this person here. My brain goes, oh, nothing bad happened. No one came to attack me. It doesn't mean So you actually lose your status anxiety in that environment, and your brain will actually unstifle itself. So you want to be constantly coaxing your brain into unstifling itself, and uh, basically, that's kind of the biggest trick I used to warm up. I'm just like, hey, I'm just riding the charioteer, or I'm just the charioteer riding the chariot. My brain's kind of freezing now. It is very, very difficult to read something that unconsciously or consciously you know is not going to make a big difference in your life. You have to believe that it's going to make the difference. You have to see how on your journey it's going to make the difference. You need a sense of urgency. You need your mind to focus. You need to be engaged. Uh, For someone like me, my mind doesn't get engaged unless I'm stimulated, unless something, you know, there's something going on in my life that's interesting, something powerful that's going on that's going to stimulate me to get me engaged. And this is why every single time on my journey I encounter some new book or some new person learn from. I'm loving it. You ever notice uh, when I'm talking about books I'm reading or people I'm learning from, I'm really all about it. That's because there's something on my journey that made me become all about it. I'm psyched about it. I'm pumped up. All right. Now, another factor to this, aside from that sense of urgency, is the belief that you can actually do it. The belief that you actually can produce a result. Um, Take, for example, terrorism. Okay. Touchy subject, I know. 
why is it that uh, the best uh, recruits for terrorism is people from uh, countries where there's a lot of hopelessness? Well, if there's a lot of hopelessness and you tell somebody, look, uh, you know, you can go fight this big war against these big bad guys, you know, say they're gonna you know, do something bad to this branch or some crap like that, something completely stupid. But, uh, you know, you tell this person from a hopeless country, you know, you can go on this grand adventure and, you know, take down these bad people and da da da. And, uh, you know, whatever good things are gonna happen to you in the afterlife or whatever it is. And that person's coming from a hopeless place. The question that I would ask you is why wouldn't he do that? Uh, I'm not saying that he should, but I'd ask you, why wouldn't he? If his life is completely hopeless, there's nothing good going on, this suddenly starts providing to a lot of needs that that person has, and that's why they take that path. That's why if you wanna get rid of terrorism forever, you can't, you know, killing them all is, is, you know, could maybe be a good approach, but an even better approach, if it was possible, would actually be to eliminate hopelessness. That would be the best way to eliminate terrorism in my personal view, but you may have your own view on that, and you know, I'm not an authority on that, but that's just a thought that I have, okay? Now, how about as far as believing that something is possible? Well, take myself. It is very easy for me to eat kale, broccoli, spinach, essential fats, clean meats, you know, stuff like that every day. It's very easy for me not to eat processed foods. It's very easy for me to go out every day and work on my game. It's very easy for me to spend a lot of time reading. It's very easy for me to do 20 minutes of meditation. It's very easy for me that when people I work with are pissing me off, to keep myself calm, call them calmly, and work it out. All those kinds of things. It's very easy for me to do that. Do you understand? All those things that people struggle with, such as you know reading a lot or learning a lot or internalizing it or implementing it, is very easy for me. Why? The reason that it's easy for me is because I believe it's possible. Okay, I believe that if I do those things, I will have a payoff. So if you, you know, think about a hopeless place, well, you know, you put a book in front of them, you say, here, look, learn from this book. Why would they read it? Why would they read it? If you don't have the belief that it's actually gonna give you a payoff, there is no point. People talk about self-development and pay lip service to it. Like, you should step up, man, and you know, things like that. But in my experience, stepping up and in, in developing yourself it involves a lot of great wins and thrills and euphoria, but it also involves a lot of harsh looking at yourself, like really looking at yourself in the mirror and questioning yourself. So you, you, know, you wanna believe I'm awesome and fuel your certainty and go hard, but I think that you also want to take very, very harsh looks at yourself that can be very painful. You wanna do that at times, and you wanna get out into nature or into isolation or out with your friends that will challenge you and think about you know, who you are, where, you, you know, where you're going, what you become, because again, you're motoring along and if you go a little bit this way, you wind up over here. If you're a little bit this way, you wind up up here. If you're a little bit this way, you wind up over here. And so you need those periods of examination and, and kind of pulling out and looking at that. Sometimes I just feel confused, you know? Um, I have been reading like the front page of RSD Nation almost every single day for several months. And I'm watching all these videos, some of which even contain different opinions on the same topic and different angles on the same topic and I have all this information in my head and you know finally after a couple months of not going out and just watching all these videos I walked up to a girl and I have all these different ideas in my head and I hear them all at the same time and they're just confusing me and I walk up to the girl and one guy is telling me to be really direct with her and another guy is saying to be funny and another guy is saying I need to make all this drama with her and make her cry or call her a dog and another guy is saying just be cool and to be friendly and cool and all these voices and I hear them in my head and I don't know what to do and it's like all these things in my head in my head just going on and then I just go hi 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 and then I run away and then, you know what sometimes I feel like I'm just being manipulated with all this free content given to me by these guys and I don't know what to do and I just thought maybe somebody could help but you know what nobody can help Fuck this shit, okay it's just meant to manipulate me and ruin my life Fuck this I don't want to jump don't jump it's no. not worth it it's it. not worth it all I'm confused it. I'm confused Please. confused <laughs>
Thank you guys so much for watching. I made this video because Daniel Sajberg asked me to. So if there's a famous entrepreneur that you want me to profile next, check out the link in the description and you can go and cast your vote. I also love to know which clip resonated the most with you, what lesson are you gonna take from this video and immediately apply to your life or to your business somehow. Leave it down in the comments below. I'm really curious to find out what you have to say. I also wanna give a quick shout out to Roger Pierce. Roger, thank you so much for picking up a copy of my book, Your One Word, and making that awesome little cartoon, Sully startup around my book as well. Thank you so much for the support, man, and I hope you enjoyed the read. Thank you guys so much for watching. I believe in you. I hope you continue to believe in yourself and whatever your one word is. Much love. I'll see you soon. When you learn to relate to yourself, again, you have these like low self-image or bad self-talk. And, you know, again, that's a lot of that is just burning away the bullshit. Like guys are like, I can't stop having these limiting beliefs or I can't stop feeling bad about myself. It's like, y you can. It's just, you have to slowly do it. You have, to, you have to slowly build it up. Positivity is a muscle that you slowly build up and uh, you build them up. So that's the same kind of thing, right? It's, you have to throw yourself into the fire at the next paradigm until you become the person who you wanna be.